And now we introduce one theorem that is about the uniqueness of a uh, limit. Okay, so suppose a n is a convergent sequence. Sequence. So a convergent sequence means a sequence that converges to some real number. Okay, then then the limit is unique. Unique. So this means there are no two unit limits. Okay, there are no two limits. Uh, if there exists a limit, then that is unique. So let's prove this. I mean, this sounds very trivial, but uh, anyway, let's prove this. So suppose we have two uh, two limits. Okay, so let alpha and beta, which are real numbers, be the limits of this sequence. Okay, then take any positive epsilon, okay, positive, positive real number. Okay. This can be anything, okay, however small or however large. Okay, so First of all, alpha is a limit. So limit of a n is alpha. So this means for this epsilon, there exists some integer. Let's call it n prime, uh, some uh, natural number, uh, such that for all natural numbers that are greater than this n prime, uh, a n minus alpha is less than epsilon. Okay. And similarly, since beta is also a limit of a n, so this means there exists some natural number, let's call it n double prime such that for all integers, uh, sorry, all integer, all natural numbers, oh, wait a minute, uh, sorry, uh, this should be, if n is greater than or equal to n prime, then a n minus alpha is less than epsilon, right? So in this case, if lowercase n is greater than n double prime, then a n minus beta uh, is less than epsilon. Okay, now let us define this capital N as the larger of n prime and n double prime. Okay, so max n prime, n double prime means the greater of the two. Okay, so the greater of the two is n. So let's see. Then uh, alpha minus beta, if we take this uh, difference, and alpha minus a n plus a n minus beta. So we add the same we add a n and subtract a n, so that means adding zero, so it doesn't change anything. So this is equal to this, and by using the the triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to alpha minus a n plus a n minus beta. Uh, I think we should use uh, uh, okay, so so let's so for any n greater than or equal to 
capital N. We have this. And uh, since this lowercase n is greater than capital uh, uppercase n, which is the greater of n prime or n double prime. So this one, this uh, f uh, the first term is less than epsilon because of this. Because of this, right? So here, this n is gr certainly greater than or equal to n prime. And the second term is also greater than epsilon, uh, less than epsilon, because of uh, this. This this lowercase n is n is certainly greater than n double prime. Greater than or equal to them. So this is epsilon plus epsilon, which is two epsilon. Okay. So this means uh, we are taking epsilon as any positive real number. So this uh, this inequality alpha minus beta modulus less than two epsilon means this quantity is less than any arbitrarily arbitrary positive number. Okay, arbitrary chosen positive number. So this means uh, we have. Uh, seen this argument before so this indicates alpha is equal to beta so therefore uh, this limit is unique and that's the end of the proof next let us define the notion of a bounded sequence bounded sequence Okay, uh, this is easy. So, if there's a sequence, we can consider this as a set of real numbers also, right? So, you know, this is just a. If we ignore the order of the numbers, then it's just a set of real numbers. So, if this set of real numbers is bounded above, then we say the corresponding sequence is bounded above. And if the set is bounded below, then the sequence is also bounded below. And if the set is bounded, that means bounded above and below, then the sequence is also bounded. And that's it. Now, let us prove a little theorem. So, any, bound, uh, any convergent sequence is bounded. sequence is bounded okay so let's prove this okay suppose we have a sequence that is convergent let's say it converges to alpha Okay, and let epsilon equal to 1. Okay, then for all, okay, for, so that is there exists, since uh, because of the convergence, there exists an, a natural number n such that for all natural numbers, if this lowercase n is greater than n, greater than or equal to uppercase n, then uh, modulus of a n minus alpha is less than 1. Okay, in this case, epsilon is 1. So, this holds. Okay, now, by the triangle inequality, triangle inequality inequality well there are actually a few versions different versions of the triangle inequality but uh, we use this one here a n modulus minus alpha modulus is less than or equal to uh, a n minus alpha which is uh, 
less than 1. I mean, we are assuming this n is greater than or equal to uh, n. Okay, so in this case, uh, if we move this alpha to the rightmost side, we have a n uh, less than, actually this is strictly less than alpha plus 1. Now, you know, this alpha is not infinity, so this means as far as this n index is greater than or equal to this capital N, then this sequence is bounded. Okay. Next, we show that this sequence must be bounded even if this n is less than capital N. Okay. For that, we define this constant. Uh, max of alpha plus 1 and a1, a2, and a3 up to a capital N minus 1. Okay, then obviously uh, for N less than capital N, we have a N less than or equal to M. So that means when N is uh, the index is less than capital N, it is bounded. So either case, so if this is greater, if this is less than, it's bounded either way. Therefore, this sequence is bounded. And we are done. Okay, but however, you should be careful that the converse is not true, you know. So we said if convergent, convergent, if a sequence is convergent, then it is bounded, but not vice versa, okay? The, the converse doesn't hold. Why? Uh, to prove that, uh, we just need one example. Okay, for example, if a n is negative 1 to the power of n, then this is not a convergent sequence, but it is bounded. You know, it can take only 1 or negative 1, so it is bounded, but it doesn't converge. Therefore, the converse of that theorem does not hold. Okay, the next theorem is a very uh, famous and very useful theorem called Squeeze Theorem. So it's called Squeeze. And you'll see why it's called squeeze theorem. Squeeze theorem. Okay, so here are the settings. Uh, let uh, let's see. We uh, suppose we have three sequences: a n, and b n, and c n. Okay, these are sequences. Then suppose, well, we assume uh, for all n natural numbers, we have uh, a n is less than or equal to b n, which is less than or equal to c n. And also, we assume that uh, a n converges. Uh, a n converges and C n converges. So both converges to the same value, alpha. Okay, then the limit of B n is also the same, this same alpha. Okay. Uh, so this is a very useful theorem because suppose we want to uh, find the limit of Bn, some sequence Bn, but uh, it may be a little bit difficult to calculate the limit directly. But if we can come up with some other sequences like An and Cn, which are known to converge to the same value, and also which squeezes Bn 
from below and above. Then we can we can uh, know that uh, the limit of uh, n b n is also alpha. Okay, so let's prove it. So since uh, since a n converges to alpha, there exists. Uh, okay, let's say uh, let suppose uh, let epsilon be any uh, positive real number. Okay, so since a a n converges to alpha, there exists some n. Let's say n prime. Which is a natural number such that, uh, uh, well, we just abbreviate uh, the notation. So for any natural number greater than or equal to n prime, we have a n minus alpha is less than epsilon. Okay? So this means, uh, in particular, this means negative epsilon less than a n minus alpha. Uh, which is uh, less than epsilon. Okay, uh, we don't need this part, so let's just consider this part. And similarly, since C n converges to alpha, so this means for uh, there exists some natural number. Let's call it n double prime such that for all n greater than or equal to n double prime, C n minus alpha is less than epsilon. Okay, so this means negative epsilon greater than C n, uh, less than C n alpha, which is less than epsilon. So we don't need this part, so let's consider only this part. Okay, now uh, from uh, now from uh, one of the assumptions here, this one we have uh, a n less than or equal to b, uh, b n less than or equal to c n, and by subtracting alpha from everything, we have this and b n minus alpha less than or equal to c n minus alpha. But uh, this a n minus alpha is greater than negative epsilon. And this c n minus alpha is less than epsilon. So b n minus alpha, sorry, uh, b n minus alpha, this one is between negative epsilon and positive epsilon. So this means this means b n minus alpha its modulus is less than epsilon. So this shows therefore so this is this n is greater than okay uh, I think I should say this n is greater than or equal to maximum the greater of n prime and n double prime. Okay, so this holds for these n's. Okay, so if we uh, if we define this max uh, n prime and n double prime as n, then for any natural numbers greater than this n, we have this inequality. Therefore, Bn also converges to alpha. And we're done.